pleased to uh, uh, stand before you to offer my reflections on uh, the budget, the federal budget that's uh, just been announced uh, this afternoon. Now, having been there in that place for other budget announcements, I know that the impact of a budget can't be realized or won't be realized until it's played out uh, over time. But there are a number of, of uh, impressions that I can give you right up front. First of all, and it won't be a surprise, I'm delighted that the money for the Scarborough subway uh, is there uh, in this budget. <coughs> Uh, and given the history we've had with flooding and uh, the ice storm, uh, I'm really pleased that uh, they've made a $200 million uh, commitment over five years for disaster mitigation. And one of the first things I would like to, to uh, follow up with our staff is to see uh, if there's any money in there for the City of Toronto. Um, it appears to be, in a very general way, a stay-the-course budget, uh, a balanced budget. Uh, and the feeling I have uh, is that cities uh, and provincial governments that were looking for uh, assistance, considerable assistance this year, can probably expect that assistance next year uh, when the uh, Government of Canada uh, gets the revenues that they will need to address uh, the concerns of uh, both municipalities and provinces. I was really pleased to see uh, uh, the creation of an automotive innovation fund, a Canada Research Excellent Fund, uh, internships uh, for skilled workers, because if you're not on the cutting edge of technological innovation, then you will be behind in this fiercely competitive international world where technology is going to determine the prosperity of, of our economy. So, Kudos to the federal government for investing in what I think is a very necessary uh, part of our uh, economic uh, growth. Also, uh, money for infrastructure, $391 million over five years. would like to have seen a bit more. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, the city will certainly press the issue uh, in uh, next year's budget. The uh, the two parts of our society that I think are perhaps the most stressed, youth and seniors, are having their issues uh, addressed uh, in this budget as well. So uh, all in all, uh, a balanced budget, a steady budget, someone uh, that I was talking to called it a vanilla budget, um, nothing uh, outrageous one way or the other, uh, but um, it gives the city uh, a platform. Uh, that we can use to uh, engage the federal government uh, as a senior partner in the growth of the City of Toronto. And I would look forward to working with uh, representatives of the federal government, Mr. Flaherty uh, among them, so that uh, in time for their next budget, when there's more money available, that they will really be aware the challenges that we face as a government in the city of Toronto, and hopefully they'll have the money to be more responsive to us. That's it. Say two. <laughs> <laughs> does this, the fact that the money's in there for the Scarborough subway, does that make it locked in now in your mind? That well, I would, I would hope so. But, um, for sure, for sure. you know, with transit issues and an election coming up, both municipally, um, you never know. But I'm still a strong supporter of the subway, and I'm delighted that the federal government is still at the table and willing to work with uh, the uh, city of Toronto in building that subway extension. Uh, the mayor came out today and met his chief of staff sent a request to the city manager asking for the fire flag to be taken down. What's your response to that? Well, I think that the flag should stay. And I would suggest to you that that is the will of council as well. How do you, how do you know that it's the will of council? Because I talk to councillors. What did you discuss with Irene Miller of PFLAG? She brought me up to date with the, the organization, its background, uh, its goals, the uh, 
many different ways in which they make contributions to uh, um, social cohesiveness in the City of Toronto. Uh, it was a very enjoyable uh, meeting with her, uh, and uh, I look forward to working with her in uh, the balance of this term. Who reached out to who, and is this a result of the, what's going on with the flag here at City Hall? Uh, we uh, reached out, it's my understanding that we reached out to her. And it's as a result of the whole issue of the flag that's been going on? Oh, I would say so. Yeah, that's a fair, fair uh, uh, comment. Do you have any concerns about Jean Jones? I've worked with Jean. I sat on the board of the, the Toronto Community Housing Company um, for a half a term, and previously uh, I served on the original board, and I know that uh, Jean was hired to bring a fresh approach to the uh, to the board, uh, and I know he's thrown himself into the job. But I'm not going to comment on uh, anything right now because no report has been written, no analysis has been offered, uh, and so uh, they're going to have a meeting tonight. Uh, and um, I know Bud Purvis, the chair. I know he's a fair guy, uh, and uh, I think the issue will get a fair hearing. So. You know, we have a board for the Toronto Housing Company for a reason. That's a very capable board, uh, and so I'll leave any comment to them. One thing I have to tell you is that in the short time Gene Jones has been here, I've converted him to Canadian football in the Toronto Argonauts. Mm -hmm. Same with Andy Byford, by the way. <laughs> okay, thank you.